All right, Shalom family. Hope everybody's in a good place. Uh, thank the Most High for another day. I know it's been a while since I did a video, but I just wanted to uh, just share a few things, uh, something that's been on my heart about putting your humanity over your heritage. Humanity over heritage. Oftentimes, you'll see so many people, it's the opposite way in the Israelite tradition where they put their heritage over their humanity. So that's what we're going to talk about today, family. So um, I am Haji Golightly. I'm the son of William, who was the son of Daniel, who was the son of Freeman, who was the son of George. I thank the Most High for these great men. Uh, I give him all praise, glory, and honor for what he's done for me in my life and for loving us enough enough to send his only begotten son, who is a perfect example of, uh, of sonship that we are trying to move and operate in. So that being said, the Messiah gave us some really, really uh, key things to focus on in terms of our humanity. If we read, uh, we can read um, Matthew chapter five, when he discussed the Beatitudes or attitudes that ought to be on display in our lives. Why? Because we are arguably, you know, to some, not to me, but we are the chosen people. So if we are the chosen people, we have to have a higher level of humanity, a higher level of, of, of character that reflects the very nature and the essence of the Most High. Because, you know, we love to quote, you know, uh, Amos 3 and 2, out of all the, uh, the families of the earth, only you have I known. So if he knows us, and we are in relationship with him. That knowing is an intimate element that communicates covenant as it would be with a man and a woman. So being in covenant, has that benefited you and will it benefit the other nations of the earth? Because, you know, uh, what is that? Exodus 19 tells us that uh, the intentionality of the Most High was for Israel to be a kingdom of of priests, a holy nation before him. And it wasn't just meant for us to be priests to one another. It wasn't for me to just talk to you and try to tell you the oracles of the Most High and, and how to live your life. No, the, 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 the intentionality of the Most High was for us to influence the whole world, which we have done directly or indirectly. They're able to look at this book, which is uh, as one of my elders puts it, like a message in a bottle of the examples, the successes and the failures of our ancestors. And they can use those things as, as didactics, as, as teaching tools, teaching instruments to learn about the character and nature of the God of the Hebrews, the only true and living God, the only, the most powerful uh, being that ever was or ever will be the creator, the sovereign, the ruler of heaven and earth. We're talking about the God, the power of the Hebrews. There's other deities, but not for us. He is the power of all powers. And if that's the case, if you have made Yah, yod he -Wah -He, if you have made Yah the most high in your life, are you displaying the humanity the, the, the character, the nature, the compassion that he would have you to display. Are you doing that? Because when he gave us um, uh, Exodus 20, Exodus 20 tells us about how, um, you know, the, the commandments of, um, you know, we, we go through the commandments. The first four commandments are the way that Yah wants us to relate to him. The other six deals with the humanity. It deals with how you relate to one another. First off, how you gonna relate to your, your father and your mother. We're gonna start there. That's the basis, the foundational instruments, the, the building blocks of a strong nation, of a strong tribe. You know, the family is are the granular elements that it starts with. And that's why I talk about patriarchy so much because that's the beginning. We can't get to nationhood before we can get to, or um, we can't get to nationhood before we have strong families. Um, but the rest of the commandments deal with our humanity. 
how we relate to one another is more than just knowing that you are the chosen people. And because of that, you have to have exemplary character in nature that reflects the most high. Those are the things that um, I want to talk about. I'm not going to be before you long. Um, I just wanted to kind of preface it with, are you putting your heritage before your humanity or your humanity over your heritage? And we're going to find a couple examples of that. I'm just going to jump right to uh, Luke chapter 13. Let's go to Luke 13. Luke 13 and 11. Luke 13 and chapter 11. I'm sorry, verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Yahushua saw her, he called to uh, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified Elohim. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Yahushua had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore, come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. Listen to this religiosity. Listen to those that are now. Did he have uh, Torah to say that? OK, um, these are the rules for the, the Sabbath, but he's misapplying it. The heritage that was given to him are the commandments. Absolutely. But is there a misapplication of that? Let's find out. Verse 15. And uh, Adon then answered him and said, Adon just means Lord, yo. Thou hypocrite, did not each one of you on the set, I'm sorry, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Hasatan has bound low these 18 years, be loose from the bond on the Sabbath day? He caught them in their own hypocrisy. And when he said these, these things, all his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that he had done. This was the example that they understood that on the Sabbath day, certain things could and could not be done. However, the humanity, the fact that People may need something done. Um, we can go back and we can read um, a, a couple chapters back in Luke chapter 10 about the Good Samaritan. Where we oftentimes we allow our heritage to get in the way of meeting the needs of the people. He allowed a misinterpretation of the scripture to get in the way to blind him from the human element. Are we blinding ourselves from our humanity? Do we have the character, nature, and essence of the Most High that is visible and is being expressed in everything that we do? We can go and read uh, Galatians chapter 5 about the, excuse me, about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, kindness, temperance, meekness, all those things. Those are the things that need to be expressed. Gentleness. How many times can we look at a video within the Israelite tradition and see those that are gentle, that are kind, that are long suffering? That's a good question. I'm not here to indict anyone or to say anyone is wrong in the message that they choose to convey to the Most High or to the people that they feel like the Father's told them to convey. That's not my station. However, why don't we see some of this? Why don't we see the humanity? Or 
you know, oftentimes we become caricatures of our belief systems. Are you becoming a character where you put on your outfit and you just become this thing that's not relatable? It's not real life. It's not human. We see that the Messiah understood this. He saw the humanity of this woman and had to step forth to use his gifts to benefit, not to harm, not to insult, not to demean, not to destroy. This is the essence that we must uh, uh, exemplify if we are part of his body. One more scripture, y'all, because, you know, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, we got established. I want to pull one more example and I'll be done. I don't feel the need to be before you long. Um, I know that you're busy. We're all busy. I want to read another example. We just read about a daughter of Zion who was bound for 18 years and the humanity of Hamashiach. Cause him to insert himself. Let's see if we can find a second witness of that. And I'm pulling the words of the Messiah because this is the greatest example of sonship, of humanity, of the perfection of Torah. Walking, living, breathing Torah. So we pull these examples. Uh, Matthew chapter 15 and verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, him being the Messiah, saying, have mercy on me, O Adon. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she crieth after us. Now, that, that's, a, that's a quick little sidebar. I could deal with that, but I'm not. How they equated her calling after the Messiah as her calling after them. All of a sudden, we hear in the text, she's crying after the Messiah. They say, she's crying after us. <laughs> oh man, he had a big posse. He had an entourage. Verse 24, and he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the Messiah understood his assignment very clear, knew what he was called to do, did not, um, uh, he did not violate that. But we're going to read um, an example of where um, those from outside were able to be benefited even by his assignment because of their humility. Let's read this. Verse 24. And he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. He didn't call the woman a dog. The children's bread. Who are the children? We're talking about the children of the Most High, the children of Israel, who he was sent to. Those lost sheep that had gone astray. He was only sent to them primarily. But we see those that may benefit from his humanity. Verse 27. And she answered, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And Yahushua answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. So because of her faith, the Messiah could not just remain in that, that station that said, well, I, I can only do certain things for the children that the faith of this woman touched him. It touched his heart and her faith made her whole. But he understood that at, at that point, she had exemplified everything that needed to be there in order to qualify her for the healing. 
And then he just spoke it. And it was so. Understanding that sometimes, you know, the human, the human element has to be there. You don't, you, if you had a daughter, you wouldn't want your daughter to be bound, to be handicapped, crippled. You wouldn't want her to be vexed with a devil. So we have to have that compassion and consider ourselves, which the scripture says. So we have, even as the elders, you know, those that are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, you know, considering yourself. Consider your humanity when somebody needs you and is difficult and it may be someone of, of the other nation. Our goal and role is to be a light unto the Gentiles. How are they going to be a light if, if, and how can they receive the light if you keep pushing them away? Get away from me, heathen. Are you putting your heritage above your humanity? Or will you allow your humanity to be so expressive and so great in the character and nature of the Most High that it validates your heritage? Where they can say, yeah, absolutely. These are the people of the Most High. The most caring Forgiving, compassionate, generous, loving, <sighs> the humanity. Have we lost that? I know that oppression has, has driven us mad. But we got to tap back into that humanity, family. And be what the Father has called us to be. That's all I have. I love you. May the most high continue to bless you, strengthen you, and expand your house according to the measure of your faith. May your head lack no oil. May you, may you and for my men, uh, uh, the patriarchs, never, may you never lack a man to stand before the most high. Hallelujah. The most high be with you. Shalom.